Chairman, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by thanking uh, the Council to invite me to, 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 to address you. Uh, since uh, we don't have uh, a lot of time, I decided to uh, avoid a uh, long introductory uh, uh, speech. I will just say a couple of uh, lines and uh, later on I will be available to your questions and comments. Let me also say that uh, all the statements I do not reflect the official position of my country. Uh, in case somebody would like to clarify, uh, I, I, uh, I would be more than willing to, to do so. Number one, I am very pro-European. Number two, I am among those, uh, there is a very small minority, would uh, that uh, we uh, advocate a uh, idea of the uh, United States of Europe. Number three, I think that we are at the crossroad. There are two basic, two basic strategic ways to go. I mean, referring to the European Union. One, uh, the way back to uh, national politics. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, the end of a great idea that preserved peace for, for seven decades and uh, brought the uh, peace and stability and welfare to the uh, European Union. Uh, the second uh, path, very complicated one, very uh, uh, which uh, with uh, a lot of problems uh, and uncertainty is the way to, uh, to deepen the uh, European Union, to uh, go with institutional reform, to go beyond the uh, Lisbon Treaty, and to think about the new uh, Convention on the Future of Europe with a uh, better result than uh, it used to be a draft constitution that, uh, you know, uh, then failed at uh, uh, two referendums back in France and uh, in the Netherlands in 2004. And finally, uh, since you, Mr. Chairman, referred to, to Brexit, Brexit has not been neither the cost uh, neither the uh, uh, result of the institutional crisis of the European Union. Uh, I'm very sorry that our uh, friends and colleagues uh, from Britain have decided so. We have to respect their decision. Uh, but uh, it has been a very sad signal uh, which uh, has said a lot about the uh, present condition of the European Union. And now I think it would be good to uh, fairly negotiate with London, uh, paying attention to this. If uh, Britain would uh, negotiate in the next couple of years after triggering Article 50, a good, uh, 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 a good uh, uh, agreement, uh, then I think a good agreement in the eyes of uh, those who, who advocate the exit, then uh, I think uh, some countries would follow uh, because it would be fine to, to give uh, certain uh, privileges and and not to, to, to uh, take uh, the responsibilities. On the other side, the, the, the bad compromise would be bad for London, would be bad for Brussels. Uh, it's going to be a piece of art to get a for a uh, for a uh, 
let's say so, uh, successful uh, end of, of this, uh, as I said, sad story, but, but uh, we have to, to, uh, to, to obey the, the decision by the, the, the British people. I think uh, on the other side, there is a huge need for Brussels institutions, uh, Commission, Council, and the House uh, in Strasbourg and Brussels to, uh, to think about uh, the pr pragmatical and, 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 and long-term vision. I've already said what my long-term vision is. Pragmatical vision would be a couple of, a couple of uh, reforms uh, that would provide the Commission a more efficient uh, and dealing with, with the problems of uh, half a billion people. Uh, and that would uh, gain some momentum uh, which would lead to a less lack of confidence to the institutions and offer them some sort of leadership uh, to go on with, as I said, the idea of more, uh, more Europe, not less Europe. Saying so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would conclude my uh, introductory speech, uh, which I know was very, very uh, a brief one, but uh, I, I would uh, rather answer the questions and uh, listen to your comments on, on the issue. Okay? Thank you. Hi, sir. Sir, you're not right. We're not in the same group. My uh, government is uh, strongly supporting the quota system. So, uh, uh, referring to the Visegrad uh, countries, uh, wouldn't be uh, the, uh, uh, the right uh, way to describe our behavior. Uh, you know, uh, let us remind. Uh, ourselves uh, about a huge mistake in the Council. <coughs> I used to be the, the member of the European Council as the Prime Minister for uh, uh, three years during the financial crisis. Has made uh, a huge mistake uh, uh, at the end of June uh, 2015. When uh, debating the uh, uh, migration crisis, the Council, not for the very first time, but it has happened rarely in the past, uh, went apart without any conclusion. And I said uh, right away that this is a very, very bad signal. Since I am, as I said, very pro-European and uh, the way to go there is to find a compromise solution on common policy. Including the meeting without common you know, policy on migration issue would lead us to moral and political catastrophe. Uh, we succeeded then uh, to have a uh, frank debate back in my country, and the government has changed the uh, position. At the next uh, meeting, uh, Slovenia has advocated a fair share of burden. Now, let us be frank. <coughs> In case European Union, and I said it also, you know, when meeting the my, my colleague and friend, the uh, Hungarian president, and uh, all my my colleagues and friends, in case on this very issue, European Union will not be able to find out a compromise solution that would lead us to a huge fail, and I think would give a certain momentum to uh, those who advocate uh, uh, going back to national politics because the migration issue will not be any more the humanian, uh, humanitarian issue but security issue. And changing the, 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 the nature of the problem would mean that, uh, you know, basically every country has to, to, to then think about their own security. That is why I strongly support uh, uh, the uh, initiative of, uh, by uh, President Hollande and uh, Chancellor Merkel 
on the security of Europe. I think it's a good decision because it lead, lead, lead us to uh, it leads us to uh, uh, common decisions on security on one side, on uh, uh, humanitarian issue on the other side, and uh, would split this uh, uh, problem in two parts, which is good. Because, you know, uh, if not doing that would, would allow those who would like to, to, to mix those two problems a huge maneuver for, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, in a way, uh, uh, forming a public opinion in, in a wrong way. So, let, let me start by saying, uh, let me finish by saying that uh, Slovenia will definitely advocate a common uh, migration policy. Yes, it's true, we, we strongly advocate to, to uh, uh, close the uh, Western Balkans wave but not because we would like just to close the door. I think it is our uh, obligation under uh, international law to, uh, you know, to uh, open the door for asylum seekers. It's not the choice of the country. It is obligation under international law. But on the other side, it is true that among millions are also economic migrants and uh, every country, every union has a uh, certain maneuvering space for definition what is good and what is what it, it is not, what is acceptable and what is too much. And I think to, to focus on uh, you know the uh, uh, the borders of European U uh, Union and then to, to common policy would be the the, the the fine way. Let me say one thing: it's not fair that when after closing the uh, so-called Western Balkans uh, way. Uh, now we are just quiet and observing the Italian problem. It's not the Italian problem. Uh, you know that you know, uh, ships are crossing the Mediterranean Sea and uh, now uh, hundreds uh, and thousands of, of miserable people are coming to Italy and we are just, you know, uh, waiting for a solution and doing nothing. I think it's not, it's not a, it's not good, we have to sh share the burden. Slovenia is prepared to do so, and we will do whatever it takes to find a common solution. If not, this will be another bad signal for the future of Europe. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> well, the secret would cost you $100, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. so uh, as far as Brexit, Brexit is concerned, um, number one, uh, if I would, uh, if I, I did say that the Brexit is not the result of that, would not be so. I mean, in a way, absolutely, it has been a result of the crisis of, of uh, uh, Brussels institutions and the, the efficiency of EU. All that stuff is okay, but I think that. More than that, and I, I don't want to uh, in any way interfere in uh, 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 their uh, domestic uh, politics. As in other countries, also in mine, the uh, negative uh, referendum has been more a vote against the establishment than about the future of Britain or European Union. And I think it's time now, as I said to, 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 to uh, President uh, 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 here in uh, Buenos Aires and uh, to other colleagues, uh, we have two choices. One, just to wait and see, but uh, in this case, uh, with the lack of confidence to the political institutions, people will go their way and they will try to find out solutions that maybe at the end of the day wouldn't be so fascinated as, as they would like to see at the beginning of the process. Number two, option number two is that we would, would settle, would make some reforms, tough one, but uh, that we would bring uh, 
the responsibility of our offices to do so. So I'm talking about the leadership. Uh, so uh, as I said, uh, or better to, to add, uh, in a way I think now uh, a group of uh, uh, people, not just bureaucrats, also politicians at the end of the day, would have to deal with, with, with Brexit and uh, would be feared to finish the job as soon as possible in case uh, our colleagues in London would not uh, change their minds. That, that would be uh, excellent, but this is, uh, as I said, their job, not, not, not mine. Number two, uh, I think more or less we have to focus on our problems as, as 27. Uh, and I think uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, domestic, uh, uh, homework to do and it's time to, to, to uh, get involved in it. It's up to the Commission, to the Council and to, to national politics to uh, bring some, uh, as I said, uh, pragmatic and, 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 and more long-term decision on, on the future uh, uh, of Europe. Number two, Slovenia. Well, uh, this is is not very popular in my country. Uh, I, I uh, uh, has not been a very popular politician as a former prime minister during the financial crisis. Everybody knows that uh, my uh, agenda of reforms uh, at the end of the day has failed with, with uh, three fiscal uh, 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 issues at the referendum. In, uh, among them, the uh, 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 pensions reform that has been then later on uh, accepted uh, without the referendum. <laughs> uh, let, let me tell you uh, what it is not uh, uh, very popular in my country and other countries in, in Europe, but it is efficient. Uh, uh, we we are criticizing uh, so-called uh, fiscal discipline or a German formula very strongly. Well, uh, I am among those who are advocating. I mean, the problem is. No uh, reason. <laughs> the problem is uh, that uh, I'm a strong believer in free trade, so uh, yeah. that is why I am advocating uh, those agreements. Not that I would say that uh, every as it is at, at the moment as a draft is is perfect, but uh, basic, basic. I don't see a good future for business without uh, these agreements. They are not uh, complete, they are not perfect, but in case we would now reject the agreement with Canada, uh, would be just a signal that the agreement with states would be the next one to fail. And then we are posing the question, where all this would lead us? To uh, isolate us? Uh, then what? And I think that would be just another, you know, good reason that uh, basically uh, national politic, national or nationalistic uh, politicians would say that basically at the end of the day it's better to to consider the national interests of uh, member countries, not to consider the common interest of European Union. And that I think would lead us to, to a very, a very, um, uh, very tough uh, future. So it is now up to leadership in in Brussels, but also to uh, leadership of every European country to uh, advocate some some political statements. And one of of them, I think, is uh, free trade. Uh, it is not about, it is not without risks, it is not without some controversial uh, consequences and all that stuff, but let us uh, pose a question. What in the case that 
no of none of them would would have our support. So um, we are going really through a very very difficult time. But uh, you know, when going through a difficult time, you all you, you just have to have even more clear positions and decisions. More the circumstances are complicated, more clear you have to be to lead the people. You can, at the end of the day, uh, lose their confidence, but until then, your moral obligation is to stand uh, with your positions. Two comments. Number one on the speakers uh, over here. This is the very first official uh, visit of the President of the Republic of Slovenia to Argentina. Um, uh, definitely, uh, issue number one is to deepen the bilateral relations between Buenos Aires and Ljubljana. But I, um, I am uh, investing the, the same amount of uh, you know, expectations also to meet with different representatives of different groups of our Sabine community. Uh, just to inform you, uh, next week uh, in, uh, Slovenia will have a very, very important uh, uh, you know, moment in the history. Uh, we decided, uh, with some very difficult debates and dilemmas, and with the division uh, that uh, has been long for uh, 70 years, to uh, bury the victims of communist regime. And that I think it's remarkable crossroads in spiritual uh, way for my country. Uh, and I uh, came here to this beautiful city also to address different groups. Those uh, who has been, you know, uh, 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 how to call it? Those who has been, uh, you know, uh, the uh, matter of repression from fascist time and those from communist time to work together on one country and one homeland. That is why I'm here. It's a precious moment for my country and my people. Uh, we cannot afford to have two homelands. Uh, and the future is so delicate that we have to work together. Nevertheless, what has been the history. We cannot, have, we cannot change the history, but we can change the future. Number two. Uh, number two. Uh, uh, Middle East issue, Ukraine, and all that stuff. I've uh, hosted President Putin uh, at the end of July in my country. Not because that I would share his policy on those issues. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But uh, I thought that at the uh, 100th anniversary of, uh, uh, you know, uh, small Russian church in our country that remind us about their victims during World War One would be a good occasion to come together and also to talk. Because I believe in dialogue and I would strongly, strongly support the decision by uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel and uh, President Hollande and uh, President Poroshenko. President Poroshenko will be in a couple of weeks, my guest, in Ljubljana, and Russian President to debate the Ukrainian future. I think the time has come for European Union to slowly also 
solve some conflicts, not just or produce them or being a part of them or being just a side of them. So Ukrainian one is, I think, uh, a, such a problem that could be solved by a dialogue because I do think that uh, uh, there is a way to go. But I, I have to be, uh, I have to be uh, uh, very cautious about it because I think it's not possible to, 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 to get there without European Union to have a common position on the future of Ukraine. Pay attention. Will Ukraine be a full member in the future? Will get a sui generis status? Or what? Because I think it is our obligation to, to, to convey a strong message to Ukrainian people to believe us or not to believe us. And saying that, I would uh, once again refer to my, to my uh, personal opinion that I think Ukraine, Turkey, and some other countries that now are applying for full membership, probably at the end of the day, they would not get there, but as a full member countries. But I think it would be very wrong to to uh, to uh, leave them out of the uh, the uh, common uh, or uh, strong uh, relations. And uh, I think that uh, you know. Uh, involving the sui generis status or a status of special relations would be maybe a way to think, to go and to, to then convey the message that at the end of the day, Ukraine, Turkey and the similar <coughs> countries would not be a full member, but nevertheless would have a special status with, with you. Because colleagues, uh, excellencies, those who are those of you who are from European Union, let us be frank with each other. Let us remind us a, the last decision of Dutch uh, 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 Parliament on Ukrainian agreement. They, they voted against it, not because the House would vote it against Ukrainian status, but once again voted against the, the government. So we are dealing with, with the same problem uh, uh, once again. So I think uh, Ukraine is number one and I think could be solved and I do support the dialogue and I think uh, the meeting today maybe uh, uh, would bring us some fresh uh, air. Uh, and I'm worried that, sorry, uh, I, I don't want, uh, especially in, in the capacity of the president, would like to, to criticize uh, some, some high officials of EU, it's not my job, but uh, I think it would be even better if, you know, the, if the high representative for foreign and, and security policy would have the meaning on this issue, if you can, if you try to understand my position. I mean, would be even better, because that would be a signal that we share the common position on the meeting with, 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 with uh, Russian Federation, and that would lead us to a common position on the sanctions. Okay, but nevertheless, let us be optimistic about the dialogue today. Number two, uh, the, the same goes with, with Middle East. Uh, once again, let us be frank. Uh, where there is uh, the European, uh, you know, uh, politics at the moment. I mean. We are basically negotiating with Turkey on migration issue and not much more. I'm saying all the time that there is no good solution with, with Turkey without mentioning the issue, and this is Kurdish issue. We cannot uh, debate, uh, you know, the, the, the whole uh, agenda down there without mentioning the problem as far as I can read the, the President Erdogan's concern. I've met him, uh, we're very good friends, so I established with him as a Prime Minister some sort of special relationship between uh, Turkey and Slovenia. So we are 
uh, uh, often uh, on, together and, and dealing with, with the problems. And he's not very uh, keen about my Sugeder's uh, status uh, uh, philosophy, but on the other side, I try to understand uh, his position, and I know that he's concerned about the Kurdish issue. And once again, I'm not sure that we have the common solution or the common statement on, on this very issue. But we have to, to dialogue. And uh, this brings us to, uh, to North uh, Africa. I've been there as a member of, uh, as a, a member of European Council when uh, we decided to, to invade, uh, or not to invade, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong, wrong word. To, to, to prevent uh, humanitarian crisis at Benghazi. But uh, I, I do remember the legitimate, the legitimate question uh, uh, by Mr. Berlusconi and myself, uh, what then? And then uh, at the time uh, has been no answer to this very, I mean, obvious question. And that is why I think now we have this problem with Assad position in, in Syria. We, we have very good experience with, with you know, with, uh, with Libya. I mean, not very good bad experience with Libya. Uh, with, uh, you know, uh, putting away the, the, the dictator, but what then? So uh, I think we, we have to, to find out a the answer to this question as minor problem and then to the, some, some bigger issues at, at, uh, as, uh, as more important. And number three, I think, and that has been always my position, I think uh, the time has come to, to, uh, to come together as international community and address so-called war on terror because I think it's a legitimate question how to deal with this issue. Uh, I think it is time to, for the international community to come together as for climate change and other big issues and to define the common strategy against this because if not, I think we would fail uh, and, and, and that would not be good for security and peace all over the world. <coughs>
country in uh, Western Balkans. So I think, think uh, in all aspects, uh, those countries are belonging to, to European Union, knowing that that would be a very difficult process to go. But I'm trying to convince my colleagues uh, that, you know, debating the future of Bosnia or Kosovo or Macedonia, uh, Serbia is much more easier uh, task to do. Uh, it is not a technical problem. And it's not a technical process. It is a sensitive political issue and sensitive political process. Uh, I think that, you know, the lack of uh, uh, inclination towards uh, uh, enlargement process would address those in those countries that would go back to old-fashioned politics, that would lead the whole region to the conflict. Uh, it is not true that only the European Union now is responsible for their reform process and all that stuff, but uh, it, is, uh, it is important. At the same time, I said at the last meeting in Sarajevo, I think all those countries could not, you know, just uh, uh, give all the responsibility just to the Brussels institutions, but know that at the moment European crisis, uh, European Union is in the crisis, the slower process of uh, integration shouldn't uh, slower also the process of reforms there. If that would go on, uh, then I think uh, we, 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 we can avoid uh, certain problems. Listen, Bosnia is a very complicated issue. I think 20 years after uh, Dayton treatment, uh, Dayton, Dayton, Dayton agreement, uh, Probably the, the, the time has come to, to innovate the whole system to be much more efficient, but it's their problem and their uh, responsibility. And we, friends of Bosnia, should be there to help them. Uh, so once again, it's their issue, but we should be there to help, help uh, all three nations there. Uh, to, to maintain one state as a modern European state. You know the problem with Kosovo, but I strongly support the dialogue between Pristina and Belgrade. And I think it's a good example of uh, solving the problems. What I am very concerned of is Macedonia. Nobody's talking about this small country. It's there, but nobody's paying attention to it. But I said to my colleagues in, in Skopje, Guys, I think the time has come to, to, for you to make some compromise solution to, to Greece and to other countries to get a compromise solution on name issue and other issues. Let us be practical because the time is running out and it's, it's time to, to, to go uh, further. So, not that this uh, region is so complicated that couldn't be, uh, you know, optimistic about it, but some action has that some actions have to be done. And I think there are absolutely enough energy that the question is who will prevail? The, uh, you know, those uh, who are trying to solve the problems or those who are creating the problems.